Burmese pythons can make excellent pet snakes as long as you have the right setup for one. I love my Burmese python Popeye here. However, they are taking over the Everglades right now and it is not a good thing. Today we'll be discussing how they were introduced into the Everglades in the first place, why it's a bad thing that they're in the Everglades right now, and what we're doing to try to control their populations. <music> The Burmese python is native to Southeast Asia where it's unfortunately endangered due to habitat loss and it being overhunted for its skin and for its meat. As you're probably well aware, this is a very large species of snake or it can grow to become quite large. Berms can grow upwards of 12 to 23 feet max. Now that is unusual of course, typically they stay towards the 12 to 15 foot range. They can also weigh upwards of 200 pounds but again that is unusual as, uh, as well and they can live around 20 to 25 years. Now being one of the largest species of snakes on planet Earth, they have big clutches. Females can lay anywhere from 30 to 50 eggs in a single clutch, sometimes even more than that, and the mother will actually protect. She'll curl herself around her eggs and protect them for the two to three months it takes for them to incubate, and then those babies will spend most of their time up in the tree branches eating primarily birds, and as they grow they move towards the forest floor and they eat primarily mammals. Berms are great swimmers as well. They can hold their breath for around 30 minutes at a time and because of this they do tend to live towards bodies of water. So the tropical wetlands of the Florida Everglades make the perfect environment for the Burmese python. In the wild, berms don't look like this really. This is an albino labyrinth mutation. This is our Burmese python Popeye, or his stage name is Popcorn for the kids, and he is just a sweetheart. However, again, they don't look like this in the wild. Instead, Burmese pythons look like this in the wild. We are actually berm sitting two beautiful Burmese pythons for the next month or so, and uh, we'll be using them in today's video as well. Now again, the Everglades is a great habitat for the Burmese python because they have no natural predators other than alligators and they have an abundant food source down there. But again, it's not a good thing that they're in the Everglades. But how did they get there in the first place? Well, we have seen Burmese pythons in the Everglades since the 1980s. They were likely escaped pets back then, but the main breeding population was released back in 1992 when Hurricane Andrew destroyed a reptile breeding facility just north of the Everglades. That released a couple hundred, if I remember correctly, uh, Burmese pythons into the Everglades. And as those grew up, they established themselves as a breeding population, which is now just being added to by more released pets. Unfortunately, because of their low detectability, since these are very uh, secretive animals, they don't move around as much as some other species of snakes do, it's hard to determine exactly how many are loose in the Everglades right now. Initially, scientists estimated that there were anywhere from 30,000 to 300,000 individuals in the wild or in the Everglades, but now we're thinking it's closer to 10,000 to 100,000 wild invasive Burmese pythons. This is still a very high number of invasive snakes. You may be wondering, well, what's the problem with having one more species of snake in the Everglades? There's all sorts of things down there, right? Well, these are disrupting the natural balance of the ecosystem. Basically, since Burmese pythons have a very low reproductive age, which means they can start reproducing when they're quite young, they have long lifespans, so they can reproduce for many years, and they have a very high reproductive potential, meaning that they get big and they lay large clutches, so they have lots of babies. All of these things together make them the perfect invasive species. The Burmese python will eat just about anything it comes across. These are eating the native foxes, raccoons, bobcats, even large deer and alligator, and endangered species like the wood stork and the Key Largo wood rat. They don't care, they will eat it as long as it's of the appropriate size, or even bigger than what should be deemed appropriate for the size of snake. Scientists actually came across a Burmese python in the process of eating a deer that was 110% of the snake's body weight. That means that deer was 10% heavier than the snake that was eating it. So they don't care. If they can, if they think they can eat it, they're gonna at least try. Because of these hungry, hungry Burmese pythons eating everything they can catch, the native predators down in the Everglades have fewer animals to prey upon themselves. So they're not able to feed themselves or they're young, so they're not able to reproduce the native predators aren't able to reproduce like they should be able to, so their populations are going downhill as well. 
Here's the other Burmese python that we are berm sitting for a while. He's a sweetheart too. I thought he was going to be a bit sassy at first, but he's just a, he's, you're just a big puppy dog, aren't you? Yeah, you're a cutie. He's beautiful too. Anyway, not only are Burmese pythons affecting the natural wildlife in the Everglades, but they're also affecting humans. So the mosquitoes down in the Everglades have fewer prey items to suck blood from, thanks to the Burmese pythons eating all the native mammals down there. So these mosquitoes are being forced to prey upon the cotton rat down south, and the cotton rat is one of the only known hosts of the Everglades virus. So because of these Burmese pythons invading the Everglades, the Everglades virus may be spreading quicker than it would with a normal balanced ecosystem. So what's going to happen when all of the native animals are gone from the Everglades thanks to the Burmese pythons? Well, we're not sure right now. We really won't know until it happens. Some scientists think that the Burmese pythons will stay in the Everglades and they won't move out from it because they don't think they can survive outside of the Everglades, while other scientists believe that by the end of the 21st century, berms will have spread to the lower third of the United States. You may think that Burmese pythons aren't able to survive the cooler climates of the northern states, which, you know, right now is true. But there was a severe freeze in 2010 of the southeastern portion of the United States. And although a lot of the Burmese pythons did die because of the freeze, there were quite a few that survived. So if the ability for a Burmese python to survive a freeze is hereditary, then all of the snakes that perish during a freeze well, perish, I guess, and then the ones that survive and have that ability to survive the freeze will pass that ability on to their young. So there's a chance that these could adapt and learn, or not learn, but evolve the ability to survive in cooler climates. But again, we won't know if that will happen until it does. So what are we doing to try to prevent the spread of Burmese pythons? Well, the biggest key is education. Teaching people that, uh, making people aware of the situation that's going on right now and teaching them that, you know, it's not a good idea to release your pet into the wild to add to that breeding population. And maybe to teach people about the, uh, the efforts that conservation biologists are making to reduce their numbers and maybe get the uh, public's uh, backing or support for those types of programs. Because the more support we have, the more work can be done in the Everglades to try to correct this issue. There there was a temporary ban on transporting Burmese pythons across state lines in the United States. However, that ban has been lifted, at least for now. Although in 2012, there was a permanent ban from importing new Burmese pythons from Southeast Asia into the states. And this is a good thing for a couple of different reasons. First off, it prevents people from buying a cheap wild-caught Burmese python that just got imported and then raising it up, realizing it was a bad idea, and then releasing their large Burmese python into the wild. And it also prevents the capturing of wild Burmese pythons from their native habitat where they are endangered. So I am in full support of the ban of importing of wild Burmese pythons into the United States. It is, of course, illegal to release Burmese pythons and any non-native species into the wild, but that unfortunately does not stop a lot of people from just driving down and secretly releasing their snakes. But of course, if you have a pet, reptile, or any pet for that matter that is not native to your area, don't release it. Of course, it's a no-brainer. But what do we do with the Burmese pythons that are already in the Everglades? Um, well, that's, that's the big question. These are very hard to hunt and track down because of the thick vegetation and therefore low visibility in the Everglades. Also, there are swarms of biting flies in the Everglades and razor sharp sawgrass that will cut the skin if you walk past it, really. So the conditions are pretty brutal and these are hard to find because of their very secretive lifestyles. Traps don't really work because Burmese pythons will just sit and wait for their prey to walk by. They don't really go out to pursue their prey much. They tried using dogs to help smell the Burmese pythons and lead hunters to the snakes, but th we found that dogs don't really have much more success than humans do, and we think that's because of that thick vegetation holding in odors in the Everglades. So it's really difficult to use dogs. And it's also risky to use dogs to help locate or find Burmese pythons because the snake might think the dog is a tasty lunch. There sadly isn't much in incentive for people to hunt the Burmese pythons either because you can't eat these snakes from the Everglades because they've accumulated too much mercury in their systems. This is called bioaccumulation and a human can handle maybe one or two meals of Burmese python meat. The mercury levels in a, an Everglades Burmese python are more than double the amount that's uh, accepted in fish for human consumption. So you can't 
eat them at all, so why would you kill them? The state of Florida did start a python hunting contest in 2013 and 2016. They ran it for a couple of years for about a month each, and there were uh, cash incentives, cash prizes for whoever caught the most or the biggest Burmese pythons. But in 2016 anyway, with over a thousand participants, there were just barely over a hundred pythons that ended up being killed throughout the duration of the entire contest. So it's not really worth the effort to put on that whole contest and the funding required behind it uh, for such a low payout. One technique that has kind of worked is using radio transmitters in the male Burmese pythons. And the transmitters are kind of like a pit tag, which is the uh, wildlife biologist version of a uh, microchip that you would use for dogs or cats. Same thing, we just call them pit tags basically. And the pit tagged males will actually lead hunters to the females that are gravid or ready to breed. That does seem to work to a point, but it's not enough to really make a dent in the population. Another technique that we've found to be working, which is great news, is that the state of Florida hired 25 full-time python hunters, and their primary goal is just to locate and humanely euthanize the Burmese pythons they find down in the Everglades. They are paid around eight to $15 an hour for a maximum of 40 hours a week, so it is a full-time job, and they're given uh, incentives for what they can find in the wild. Like, the python hunters are given a $50 bonus for every snake they find that's up to four feet in length, and then an additional $25 on top of that for each additional foot in length of the snake. And that's because it's the bigger Burmese pythons that are likely the breeding adults, or the large females especially, and those are the ones that are most heavily contributing to the population. And finally, the hunters are given a $200 bonus for any python nest they find, because a nest is going to be protected by a breeding female and there's a lot of eggs involved that they can remove so that they don't become little invasive Burmese pythons. The good news is in May of this year, or 2018, the python hunters successfully uh, eliminated their 1,000th Burmese python from the Everglades, and that tells us that you know, the effort we're putting into, or the state of Florida is putting into hiring these python hunters is really paying off. Like a thousand, that's a decent amount because it's, it's been just under a year since they were first hired. So not only is the state of Florida employing python hunters to hunt the Burmese pythons, but the Everglades National Park is also joining forces with them to hire additional hunt hunters on top of that. So that's great news because we can put more efforts into rebalancing the ecosystem down there. One newer technique that's being considered is biocontrol, which is basically just releasing a virus, bacteria, or parasite into the Everglades that targets, hopefully targets the Burmese pythons and takes them out for us. Since they're hard to hunt, why not let the virus do the work? But this technique is rather risky and unpredictable because if that virus or bacteria or parasite doesn't only target the Burmese python and it's not species specific, it can affect the native wildlife as well and it can really backfire. So a lot more research is needed before scientists even consider that type of technique. Now you might be thinking, well, if there's too many Burmese pythons in the Everglades, but not enough in Southeast Asia, why not just capture those berms and release them into their native land? Well, we can't do that because of the bioaccumulation, first off, of the Burmese pythons in the Everglades. And those pythons in the Everglades have also built immunities to certain diseases and pathogens that make them not uh, affected by those diseases, but they would carry them with them to Southeast Asia and then release possibly a very detrimental d disease to the native population. So for the good of the overall ecosystem and for the species, we unfortunately have to euthanize the Burmese pythons in the Everglades to protect the ones in Asia. Another solution that's probably crossed your mind is why can't we just take these wild Burmese pythons and bring them into our homes and keep them as pets? Well, Burmese pythons can be a bit of an aggressive species, or defensive, really, if they're not socialized from a young age. So who would really want a wild, feral, aggressive Burmese python that's upwards of 14 or 16 feet long in their house? Not a whole lot of people. Also, there's a chance that the Burmese pythons in the wild may have parasites, just like any wild-caught snake. And again, it's the whole immunity to certain diseases thing where they would possibly introduce a disease that they picked up in the wild but aren't affected by, and they could introduce it to your collection at home, which could 
cause you to lose your entire collection of reptiles. So again, for the better of the species and for your reptiles at home, it's best just to humanely euthanize the Burmese pythons in the Everglades. Now don't get me wrong, I love Burmese pythons. I think they are like big scaly puppy dogs and they are awesome snakes. They're one of my favorites actually. However, I understand, you know, the big picture and that in order to preserve and conserve the native fauna and flora in the Everglades, we have to remove the invasive species that are disrupting that natural balance. And I don't just mean removing the invasive Burmese pythons, but I personally think that all of the invasive species need to be controlled and, you know, eliminated just for the better of that ecosystem and that includes things like the wild hogs, the nutria, and the other snakes that are um, non-native in the area like boa constrictors. There's a small population outside of Miami. There's also retics and African rock pythons and anacondas that have been purposely let loose by reptile owners that didn't want the responsibility of that snake anymore. Now those other species of snakes aren't as big of a deal as the Burmese pythons are because they haven't established themselves as breeding groups quite yet, but I mean, if they're not controlled, that is definitely foreseeable in the future. So there you have it. That's uh, kind of in a nutshell, the current status and the origin to the Burmese pythons invading the Everglades. So I hope that you kind of understand why it's so important to remove an invasive species from its non-native habitat because, again, don't get me wrong, I love Burmese pythons. They are amazing animals, great pet snakes, but they don't belong in the Everglades. So thanks again for joining us today. Uh, hopefully this helped open your eyes to the situation that's going down on down south, and uh, we'll see you next time.